Well, welcome, everyone. Um, I hope you all are doing well today. Uh, my name is Rob Smythe. I am the director for Vigio International Consulting, and we are glad to have you. Um, we're, we're excited to be able to do this webinar today. We, we think that um, you all are the future of India. And um, we, our hope as a, as a company uh, is really to help all of our clients to thrive. Uh, Vigio means I thrive in Latin. And as a company, we're excited to be able to do these webinars because we, we really do think that the, the trainings and the webinars that we provide will help you in your, your classes, you in your workplace, you in your life to thrive more. Um, we are excited today to be doing this, this free webinar. In the future, we have other workshops, so you're, you're very welcome to look at those. Um, what we do as a company is we, we offer skills. We offer skills for um, students, skills for teachers, and skills for professionals who want to continue to grow, uh, to advance, to um, continue to uh, be better in the, the, the normal uh, skills that often are overlooked. So today, often people emphasize being really smart. Uh, so the kind of marks you get, uh, how well you do in your exams or in your classes. But something that's often neglected is not just how smart you are, but the skills you have, communication, um, uh, interpersonal skills, uh, how you re resolve conflict. And these are the kinds of skills that you need in the workplace. Recently, I was uh, at a, a meeting where one of the Gandhis who uh, started um, uh, CMS, a, a school here in Lucknow, was speaking. And um, one of the things he said is, what we need is adaptability, adaptability. And after the lockdown happened, all the more, Every single person needs this skill of adaptability. And in order to do that, we also need the ability to focus on the things that are most important. And so today, what we're going to be focusing on, uh, what we're going to be, be doing the webinar on, um, is about focusing, about growing in these skills so that you can thrive in your life and in your studies. So I'm the director for Vigio. Davis Abraham is going to be doing the session today. Uh, Emmanuel Tavari is our, um, uh, he's kind of doing behind the scenes, um, doing operations behind the scenes. So if you have any questions, feel free. Uh, you can message Emmanuel through this time. Um, and uh, just, just to encourage you during this time, it's going to be a packed hour. Uh, and so uh, we're not going to have time for us to, to, to turn on the mic, talk, and uh, have videos, things like that. But I assure you that this is going to be an enjoyable time for you all. With all that said, uh, let me welcome Davis, who's going to lead the session today. Hi, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's good to see all of you, and uh, uh, I hope that you're, you're doing well. Um, and uh, this is our first webinar for students. We have been doing a lot of work for um, teachers. We've been doing a lot of work for professionals. And uh, we've done career workshops uh, for students, but this is our first uh, pr uh, skills workshop, um, a free webinar for students. And uh, we're so excited to have you. So in the chat, can you just uh, mention uh, which city are you joining from? Can you just uh, uh, put, the, uh, put the, uh, your city name or your, uh, where you're joining from in the chat? Can you just put that? We'll just put that, we'll just see. Okay, so we've got Bangalore, we've got Delhi, uh, a lot of uh, uh, Lucknow, a lot of Lucknow's, uh, Jaipur, Kerala. All right, so Delhi, a lot of Tim. Okay, somebody from Thimpu, from Bhutan, as well. So a lot of Lucknow's and um, and and a lot of Delhi's, right? So we will uh, we will get your uh, uh, full details out there. So uh, we also have um, uh, a quiz running through, and, and as you know, that many of our programs we have a quiz uh, uh, running through, and it'll be on uh, Mentimeter. 
So Emmanuel will be posting the Menti link right now for everyone to see. Uh, so if you're not joined on Menti before, probably this is your first time, that's okay. But uh, it's easy to learn and follow along. So we have a quiz that will, uh, that will run through today's session. So there are three reasons why you should listen to everything that's said here. Three reasons. Number one, of course, you, should, you will learn a lot. Uh, and if you miss some, uh, and at some point in the middle, you will uh, you'll miss out uh, some of that. That's number one. Number two, there is a quiz that's running through and you need to be very attentive uh, to answer those questions uh, and the quiz. A lot of those questions will be from what I'm speaking. And number three, uh, there is a certificate for, uh, for participation in this webinar for everyone who participates. And it will be through a feedback form we give at the very end. So if you quit before that and uh, you won't get the certificate. So three reasons, um, whichever is your strongest, you can hold on to that, right? So the link for Menti has been shared in the, uh, in the, in the Zoom chat. So make sure that um, you follow along there, right? So what we're talking about today is on the topic of focus, because right now, most of us are more busier than ever before with the lockdown, uh, but are we productive? Uh, I'm sure you would have seen our promos in which we said the same thing. Are we just busy or are we productive? So that's what we look at today. And that's what we will uh, discuss throughout. So let me just see how many of you are there on the, uh, on the Menti, uh, Menti the around, I see around uh, 37 of you there. So before we start, um, let me ask the question again so that I can see all your answers here. So please put all of your answers here. Where, which city are you joining from? This is happening on Menti. So your answers are coming all live here, collected here onto the screen here. Let me uh, put the code in case you need the code. You need to go to menti.com and go to 2035150 is the code. menti.com 2035150 is the code. So that will help you to connect on uh, the Menti. So a lot of Lucknow, a lot of people from abroad as well, Kuwait, Oman, um, Thimpu uh, and a and lot of lot of uh, uh, you from Lucknow and Delhi. So some from the south as well, Vellore, um, from Kerala, from Calicut, uh, Tiruvalla, Coimbatore, Benikulam, Kerala, Patan, Tadalapura. Uh, we've got a lot from Delhi as well, right? So I think a lot of, uh, some of you joining from Orissa. Thank you for joining Bissam Katak and Kalahandi uh, and some from West Bengal. So thank you so much for joining. This uh, is uh, something that we are excited to see students from across uh, the country, right? So when you think about time, you know, that's, that's, that's the reason we are all thinking about productivity because time is a gift. It's something that is, uh, that is given to us. We don't earn it, we have it because it's been given to us. Uh, we don't know how much we have, it's a limited commodity. So let me just ask you this question uh, before we even get into the idea of time and productivity. How much do you think, how many days do you think a 72 year old man uh, lives? Um, uh, you know, I've asked this question to a lot of you before. So let's see if, uh, if you know the answer. So is it more than one lakh days? Is it like 75,000 to one lakh days, 50,000 to 75,000 days, or is it 30,000, 50,000 days, or the last option is less than 30,000 days. So this is happening on the Zoom poll. If you're on Zoom, you'll get this. Uh, and I'm, I'm just waiting for a few more to answer. So all of you, I would request you to answer. This is on Zoom, uh, on the Zoom poll. So mention uh, your answer. So what, what do you think? How many days does a 72 year old man uh, live for? And, um, and the right answer is of course, option number E, less than 30,000 days. The reason is 72 years is the average life expectancy of an Indian. And, um, and it's a limited number of days. It's 72 days. 72 years is 26,000 days. That's it. And I'm 30 years old and um, I've lived around 10,000 of those days. I've got around 15,000 left if I live till 72. Some of you have a little more, but it's a limited, limited commodity. And so each day is a blank check. Each of us gets a blank check every morning we wake up. It has all the minutes and the hours and the seconds that is given to us. It's a blank check signature. It's signed. You can use it however you want. Um, but the things that we do there where time, you know, acts strangely. I want to uh, open this up, um, uh, open it up for you. So what is one thing that, uh, that would you do that time freezes, you know, time freezes, like, you know, time doesn't move. Can you just put it in the chat, put it to Davis, Abraham, let me just uh, see your answers coming in. Um, what is one activity, something that you do where time doesn't move at all? 
and it gets stuck. Uh, is it? Is it? Uh, it gets stuck. So uh, you can just put in the chat. Uh, this is um, uh, for me. Okay, sleep, exams, studying, history class. Wow, wonderful lectures. <laughs> so uh, when studying a boring day, when I'm waiting for somebody else uh, exams. Okay, when I don't know the answer for the question in the exam, that's a beautiful answer. When you, when you know the answer, time is just flying. But there are times where time freezes. You just don't know what to do when time is just stuck. Right. Getting a scolding, ah, oh, when somebody scolds you, right, right, right. Learning uh, something that I don't know, when I can't do something and I'm stuck somewhere. Online class, video buffering, wow, that's that's a beautiful answer. Uh, sleeping, physics class, okay. I hope your teacher is not here, right? So that's the time freezing. What about time flying away? The same time seems flying away. So let's let's look at that, that answer. Um, time flying away. Vacation, gaming. Now let's. That's that's what you're talking about. Enjoying with family, YouTube, singing, movies, reading a novel, dancing. Uh, okay, <laughs> Netflix, PT period. Okay, wonderful. Quick quizzes, uh, reading books, vacation. Wow, wow, a lot of answers coming in. So you see, time acts strangely, right? It, for some things that we do, it freezes, and some things that we do, it flies away. But all of that said, it's a limited, limited commodity, right? And secondly, there is a battle right now going on. You may not know this, but it's a huge battle going on. The battle for your attention. There's a lower attention span than ever before. Just before getting on to this meeting, I was with um, a group of people who are retiring this year, 59 years old, you're retiring, and we had a program for them. And I was just interacting with them, a very different generation from what I'm speaking right now to 17 to 20 year olds. Uh, and, and they had a much longer, stronger attention span than my generation and your generation. There is a huge war going on for your attention. If you don't know, all the uh, you know, social media apps and everyone that is on the internet space wants your time. They want your attention. They make money out of advertising the more you spend on their apps. If you spend less, they'll make less. So they want you to spend more time so that they can make more money. And that's the social dilemma. That is a recent um, uh, documentary that came out which very beautifully uh, talks about that. So there is a war, a battle going on. Uh, for your attention, a huge battle going on for your attention. So let me just ask you this question again on the chat. What takes away most of your time? Is it Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Prime, Netflix, and OTT platforms? Is it texting your friends? Is it gaming uh, on your phone in your computer? Is it a mindless end surfing and um, or anything else? I'm seeing some in the chat saying that I'm 50 plus. Uh, uh, good day to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, yes. So what takes most of your time? This is a Zoom poll. I'm seeing around 65% completing. Let me just um, wait for another 10 more seconds. What takes your time? There is a battle that's going on for your time. And so you have to choose. Are you able to focus on things that are most important in your life? So let me just share the results of um, what takes most of your time. 50% said it's YouTube Prime, Netflix. And some of you are watching us on YouTube as I say this. So Instagram and Facebook is 26%. Texting um, and uh, web surfing is around 13, 18%, games around 10%, and others around 23%, right? So the, the whole point of this is, is not that these things that I mentioned are bad, but are you able to focus on what's most important? If you're a student, there's something that's important to you. You want to get ahead in your studies. If you're a college student, you're preparing for your work life or your higher studies. If you're a, if you're a postgraduate student, you're thinking of, of research. There are things that are important in your life. Are you able to focus on that? That is the question we are asking. So the gift of time is something that we all uh, need to uh, think about. So uh, let's uh, start off um, today with a quick quiz. We have got 139 of you here. Let me just give you the rules of the quiz. This is happening on Menti. So you can please move to Menti. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure that you are on your Menti screen. Uh, there are three rounds of nine questions each. Uh, sorry, nine questions in total. Uh, and top five winners get prizes. If you answer fast, you get more points. So make sure that you answer quickly and you answer correctly, right? And um, uh, make sure that uh, you enter your full name uh, in the Menti quiz board. So let me just put that up for you. This is the first round. We're gonna just talk about time and please enter your full name here, right here 
in uh, uh, in, in in the menti uh, board so i'm just waiting for all of you to join at around 63 or oh, just jump to 135 right so just waiting for everyone to join we've got around 170 plus on zoom and a few on youtube so um you can join uh, on 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 menti right now so let me just give you another uh, 15 seconds so menti code will be shared again in the zoom link for those of you join new or you can go to menti.com 2035150 is the code 2035150 is the code for today's menti quiz All right, so we've got around 150 plus joining in for um, uh, for um, for Menti. So let me just put that code again. Uh, code is 2035150. So if you're watching this on YouTube or on a big screen, go to menti.com 2035150 to participate in the quiz. Right, so let's uh, start the first round. Three rounds, three questions each, total of nine questions, five winners. Let us get this going. Question number one. Simple questions on the idea of time. How many seconds are there in a day? You've got five seconds to think about it and quickly answer it. How many seconds are there in a day? Is it 3,600, 36,000, 50,000, or is it 86,407 more seconds to answer? How many seconds are there in a day? You've got three more seconds to do the same. So time is running out. 149 of you could answer. The right answer, of course, is 86,460 into 60 into 24. Uh, 24 hours, 60 minutes, 60 seconds each. That is the right answer. Question number two, the second question on the idea of time. Indian Standard Time, IST, is based on which Indian city? Which Indian city is the, is the, is the benchmark reference? Is it New Delhi? Is it Mumbai? Is it Agra? Or is this place called Mirzapur? Mirzapur is famous for other reasons, but is it is it is it one of your options? So time is up. The right answer, <laughs> New Delhi is not the right answer. Mirzapur is the answer. I know many of you know Mirzapur in other capacities, but uh, that town is where Indian Standard Time is based off. So a quick uh, uh, fact: um, uh, it's 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 kind of the center of uh, Indian. I uh, know that stretches from Gujarat to Arunachal Pradesh, somewhere in the center. So uh, that's where it is taking 82 and a half degree east longitude, right? Third question about time. Third question about time. IST, Indian Standard Time, is ahead or behind of Greenwich Mean Time? Uh, is it five and a half hours behind or ahead or three hours behind or ahead of the Greenwich Mean Time, which is zero degree longitude? So what is, um, what is Indian Standard Time in reference to the Greenwich Mean Time? Right, so let's see. Uh, uh, okay, so that's that's an answer that many of you got right. Five and a half hours ahead. That means right uh, now it's around five thirty. It'll be around twelve o'clock in Greenwich. Okay, so after round one, after the first round, let's see who is leading in the in the leaderboard. Uh, let's have a look at that. Okay, so two of you got all of them right, and the others uh, I've got two right. So at the end of round one, we've got Timothy Abraham and Janvi Patel. Uh, in the top two, Deepika Singh, Johan, Daniel, Chriswin, Prabhati, Umesha, Tashi, and Aryaman in the top 10 as well, right? So that's going to be really interesting. We're talking about time and how it affects our productivity. So let's look at three key factors, three key factors. It's kind of an overview of our life, and then we'll get into more details, but three key factors that affect um, uh, our, our, our approach to time. If you're not able to be productive, you're not able to look at time more efficiently, it's probably because we have not thought through these key important factors. So if you're taking notes, please, uh, please not wrote, uh, write these things down. It'll be helpful for you to reflect later. I hope that this will help you in your studies and way forward. Right, the three factors. Number one, factor number one is to discover your purpose, to discover your purpose. So how do we do that? I mean, a lot of people talk about purpose, a lot about uh, talk about you know, what's your goal in life, what's your purpose in life, what are you living for? I think one key thing is to reflect on your journey. If you are a 15-year-old, 13-year-old, 20-year-old, it's good to look back uh, into your life and, and see how we have, we have come so far. Many times we don't take time for that. Many times 
we were so busy in, in you know, doing things, you know, and, and the next thing and the next thing, we, we don't take time to reflect and think it back. Uh, think, uh, for example, I loved uh, interacting with people. I loved explaining things to people. And though I did engineering for uh, six years, BTEC and my master's, I never felt at home, uh, you know, in, in, in a coding kind of, uh, or, uh, you know, really a engineering kind of field. Uh, though I took that, there was something in me that, that always wanted to be in the people space, interacting with people, teaching, training, um, interacting, learning, you know, communicating. That is what my life journey, I could see that as I reflect on that. So think of your purpose when you look back into your life. Think of of or reflecting on your journey. There's a beautiful uh, methodology called the Ikigai circle. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you have heard of, of, of this word called Ikigai. It's a Japanese concept. Give me a thumbs up. Some of you have heard about it. Okay, I'm just looking into the uh, participant list. Some of you have heard, some of you have not. Uh, around 20% have heard it. Right, that's great. So Ikigai is a Japanese concept which talks about things that you love, things that you are uh, you are good at things that you can be paid for and things that the world needs. So just put it up for you, Ikigai. Please search it up uh, whenever you have time. It's a beautiful way to look at your own life and see things that you love to do, things that you're good at, skills that you have, things that you can be trained for so that you can get a job. But at the same time, looking at things that the world needs, things that you think uh, you, you think that, oh, I wish I could contribute to that. It could be climate change. It could be uh, poverty. It could be malnutrition. It could be lack of education. There's something in the world outside you feel tugged to, oh, I wish I could do something for that. Some world need that you want to uh, uh, contribute to. So that's, that's where you slowly start to see your purpose. And, and it also helps to have mentors. And I look back at my life. Um, I've been blessed with a lot of good mentors at very important junctions of my life could see uh, my progress and sit with me, ask the right questions and help me discover uh, purpose and move in the right direction. So the first thing about productive, if you want to really use time, you need to have a purpose. Otherwise, every day morning will be a drudge. You just, just don't want to spend your time. Why would you want to spend your time better? Why would you do, want to do hard work if there is no purpose at all? So number one, think of, of ways in which you can discover your purpose. And I think uh, uh, as, uh, one question coming in um, to, uh, is um, um, uh, who can be a mentor? Yeah, one of your school teachers, if you're part of a community like a church, you know, there might be people there who can help you out there. Um, anyone who can ask you questions, maybe a little older, uh, who, who really is genuinely concerned of seeing you move forward. Thank you for that question. It is coming in the chat. Uh, thank you for that question. So keep thinking on that. Don't live a life just passing exams and taking the next course just because your friend is taking. Don't just take engineering after 12 because all of your classmates are doing that. Don't just join commerce because your best friend is joining commerce. Move with purpose. That's what brings productivity. That's what helps you move forward. That's number one is purpose. Number two is roles that lead to goals, roles that lead to goals. So let me ask you in the chat, opening up the chat for all of you, what are some roles that you play? For example, I'm a father, I'm a husband, uh, I'm a son, I'm a trainer, uh, I'm a neighbor. Uh, these, are, these are roles that I, I play. So what are some roles that you play? Can you put in the chat and um, just want to read some of your roles? Okay, daughter, sister, big sister, uh, teacher, some of you are older here, wife, son, daughter, friend, student, yes sister, leader, mentor, friend, uh, gamer. <laughs> I like the way the order is gamer, student, son, and brother. Gamer is number one. Yes, uh, I like that spirit. Right. So daughter, blogger, sister, friend, teacher, counselor, dancer. Wow. A lot of, lot of you are contributing. Twin brother. Wow. That's, that's a, a great uh, role to play. Devotee, uh, worshiper, okay. Um, motivational speaker, teacher, Wow. So a lot of, lot of, lot of you are saying, uh, 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 you know, things that are very valuable uh, for secret keeping sister. I like that. I like secret. There are secret not keeping sisters. And one of you is saying, I'm a secret keeping sister. Yes, we play these roles. There are a lot of roles that we play. We can only be productive in that context of a role leading to goals. Make goals for each role. You can only be productive in that holistic sense. You can crack the top exams 
and you can uh, be the best outgoing student. You can be topper in, in, in NEET and, and JE and all the other exams. But at the same time, if you don't have people skills, if you can't relate to you know, people uh, in, in, in a loving man, if you can't engage in a good conversation, it's very difficult that you will go forward. And that's what we call as soft skills. So think of uh, different roles that you play as a friend, as a, as, a, as a sports person, as a musician, as a son, as a daughter, as a sister, as a brother, uh, as, as a student, as a religious person. You know, all these roles make up who you are. You can't just take one of them and say that I'll be productive in that. I don't care of the others. That's not who you are. You are a collection of all these roles. And so if you need to be productive, if you need to be successful, the roles need to be played together. So think of the roles that you play, list them down and try to make some goals for each of them. Short term goals, long term goals and holistically. Holistically means together. All of this coming together will make you a productive person. So we get so busy because one of that, some of you mentioned gamer, you just so get so into gaming, you forget about everything else and that causes a problem. Uh, you, you can be so good a people person, you're very friendly with others, you ignore your studies, that causes problem, right? You're so studious, you know, you don't care about talking to others, that's a problem. We need to think of productivity in a holistic manner. Right. Think of the roles that you play and try to make goals, long term goals. That means more than one year, two years later, as a musician, where do I want to be as a son? Where do I want to be as a student? Where do I want to be? Think of roles in long term, short term and immediate goals. Right. And number three is the idea of mastering time. And that's what we'll spend a lot of time today, the rest of our time talking about. This is the third key in uh, being a productive person of using your life better. So number one is finding your purpose. Number two is your roles, finding your roles and defining your roles and leading them to goals. Number three is mastering time. Reflect often, make plans and review your progress. We'll talk about each of that in, in a short while as we expand on each of these ideas. So reflection, making plans and reviewing when we talk about mastering time. So that's what we're talking. Let's go to round two of our quiz. I hope all of you are excited to, uh, to join round two of our quiz. We've got Timothy Abraham leading after round one. Let's see if he can maintain the lead uh, or others catch up. So this is round two of our quiz. Um, please move on to Menti. Uh, Emmanuel, please share uh, the link on the Zoom chat one more time. For those who joined late, if you are watching us on YouTube, it's time to move on to Menti and wait for your questions um, on um, the uh, Menti screen, right? Let's go to round two. We're talking about students here. The, the first round was on time. Second round is on the idea of students. Let's go to round two, question number one, the fourth question of our time together. Question number four, Ikigai is a concept from which country? Is it Chinese, Korean, Japanese, or Vietnamese? I'd mentioned that. Let me see if you, if you could pick that up. Ikigai is a Chinese, Korean, Japanese, Vietnamese concept. It, yes, it is a Japanese concept. It is something that, um, that uh, uh, the Japanese people, especially the elderly was researched and then was seen why are they so content and happy in life. And Ikigai was one of the reasons. That's right, 105 of you got that right. Question number five, uh, 172 of you are ready to go. Let's see how this ends up. Right, question number five. Which of the following is not a competitive exams for students in India? NEET, NATA, IELTS, or JEE? Which of the following is not uh, a competitive exam for students in India? Right, so it's a simple question. NEET and JEE, of course, everyone knows. NATA is actually the entrance exam for architecture. IELTS, however, is a, is a qualifying exam for studying and working abroad. So it's not a competitive exam, it's a qualifying exam. IELTS uh, is an English qualifying exam for, um, for studying abroad, right? Um, NATA is for architecture. Last question in this round, for the students round, let's see how you guys fare. Question number six, which of the following is a key component in critical thinking? Read the options carefully and then uh, select the right answer. Critical thinking, is a key component. Only one of them is right. Which is the right answer? Winning the argument, defeating the opponent, asking the right questions, or being the loudest voice. The nation wants to know. 
right? <laughs> okay, 129 of you are critically thinking. I really like that fact that it's not about winning the argument. You can raise your voice, win the argument, but you may not be thinking critically. Defeating your opponent, definitely not. Sometimes, yes, not always. Uh, being the loudest voice, you don't have to be a loud mouth and, you know, and, and bang the table and shout uh, to make, uh, uh, to think clearly. It's, it's all about asking the right questions. Am I asking the right question is what matters. So critical thinking is one of the courses that we uh, take up in our Thrive workshops. We'll be talking about that uh, in a while. And it's a very, very important skill for students to have. So after round two, let's, uh, let's see how this is. Uh, it's getting really heated up. A lot of new names coming up. But I think Timothy and Janvi are really going strong out there. 46 points of difference. Aryaman has come on top. Daniel, Ananya, Sarah, Tashi, Chrisween, Raj Lakshmi, and Durgeshwari Bag in the top 10. This is getting really, really exciting. We'll have one last round that will uh, help us see who is the winner. Right, so we're talking about three keys uh, to focus. So let's get to the main uh, content for today when we talk about mastering time. And let's talk about uh, uh, mastering time. So what I want to do is take a piece of paper, a pen and paper, quickly take a piece of pen and paper. And, um, and once you have taken your piece of pen and paper, give me a thumbs up um, um, or just type ready uh, in the chat. Okay, give me a thumbs up or type ready in the chat if you have a pen and paper and ready to go. Okay, so if you're ready, give me a ready or just give me a thumbs up, whichever is convenient to you. Right, great. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs ups, a lot of readies um, and ready to go. Right, so we're going to talk about auditing time with a small exercise we're going to do now and I want you to look at your piece of paper. Right. So what we'll do now is um, is do something called the wheel of time. Some of you know this. Uh, some of you, but this is new. So please look at the screen and just follow my instructions. And uh, and and you can just look at your own paper and work on that. And we look at that at the end. Right. So this is called the wheel of time. So what you need to do is first um, draw uh, uh, draw five circles. Five circles and then draw four lines like this. Five circles, four lines. Five circles, four lines. Okay, so that you get like, like a eight piece pizza. Okay, you get something like this, right? So five circles, four lines is what you need to do. Five circles, four lines. Great, so let's move on. Five circles, four lines. And now think about eight rolls or, um, uh, um, routines or activities that you are involved in that take a lot of your time. For example, um, uh, I've put career here. You can think of studies. Um, reading is something you want to do, but you're not able to do. It's something that you want to do. It's an important role, but you're not able to find time. So you can put that. Social work, it can be something else. Hanging out with friends. Entertainment, gaming, uh, parents, siblings, friends, exercise, spiritual life. Whatever is important to you, just fill that up. Uh, I've given you eight examples here and you can fill it up um, on your paper. So please write it on your piece of paper. So wherever you find these lines, these lines meet the outer circle, please write those things out there. So eight things or roles or routines or activities that are important to you or where you spend considerable amount of time. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right, so uh, we are going to the next round. Um, next stage, step number three, step number four. Uh, let me give you 10 more seconds. Eight things that are important to you or where you spend too much time in. Uh, it can be on your phone, it can be entertainment, it can be movies, binge watching, exercise, family time, um, um, reading time, working on uh, some of the hobbies that you have, music, passion of dancing, whatever is important to you, right? Right, so let me just go to the next step, stage, uh, step number four. Step number four, in the brackets, so let me just go back here. Um, in the brackets, write the amount of hours, listen carefully, the amount of hours that you want to spend in that activity. For example, you want to spend time in reading, right? So you want, you want to do reading and you hope to read 30 minutes a day, 
you want to read. That's your ideal. That's what you want. So 30 minutes a day means around um, like multiply by six days, like six or seven days. So around three hours per week. So minutes convert to hours per week and then put that in bracket. Right. So like, um, for example, you can uh, put uh, I've just put reading seven here. That means I want to spend seven hours per week, not daily, seven hours per week in reading. Uh, entertainment. I uh, I just want to spend one hour per day maximum. You know, reading the news or watching videos. Um, I just want to spend one hour per day. So that's around seven hours per week. So for me, I've put husband and father. You can think of uh, other things that you wrote down. Uh, Thirty minutes of exercise. That's around three hours per week. So all these numbers are per week. Per week. So all these numbers are per week. All these numbers are per week. And um, so, and then step number five, what you need to do is think about how much time do you actually give, right? So what you're writing in the bracket is what you want to give, what you want to give. Uh, for example, as I said, I want to read 30 minutes a day or one hour a day. That's like seven hours per week. But I think about it, I write like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So that's around what, 25%, 30%. That's what I give. So. What is ideal, what do you want to give and what do you actually give? So what do you want to give is in brackets and what you actually give is where you put the X mark on the relevant circle. For example, the inner circle is 20%. Uh, what do you see in the center? Inner person is 20%. Then you've got 40, 60, 80, and the outer circle is 100%, right? So if you are able to give the time that you want to give, then put the X mark in the outer circle. For example, career or school, you, I mean, you're giving whatever you're supposed to give. That's hundred percent. But in reading, you want to give seven hours, you're giving around 20% or 40%, put it out there. So put an X mark, wherever is the actual time that you spent. Ideal is hundred um, percent. Um, and actual is what you actually spend. Exercise, you want to spend half an hour a day. But that's like once or twice a week. So that's like 20%, 30%. You can put an X mark there, right? So that is the uh, X mark. So give me a thumbs up or say done in the chat when you've done all these five steps. Five circles, four lines, eight roles and activities in the brackets, the time per week, and then X mark for what is your actual time, right? So I'm seeing a lot of thumbs ups and um, right, 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 right. This is awesome. So just waiting for, uh, let's give our friends 30 more seconds. Is that okay? 30 more seconds uh, to put the answer. So five circles, four lines, eight segments, eight roles. Um, and then in the bracket, ideal time per week. And then in the X mark, what's your actual time? Awesome. So let's uh, move on. The final step, the last step is join all the adjacent dots. So wherever dots are nearby, um, you need to just join them and then form this closed figure like this, right? For example, um, these are the X marks. So for example, spiritual life, join it with exercise, join it with father, join it with husband, join it with entertainment, join it with social work, reading, career back to spiritual life. So you get something like, um, you know, uh, a closed figure like this. Okay, so join all the dots using a straight line and then shade the area, whatever is inside, just, just please shade that. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the exercise. This is called the wheel of time. Okay, this is called the wheel of time. And um, yes, that should be about it, right? So I wanna ask you two questions. If you're done uh, before that, let me just put something on the poll for those who have, um, those who have found it. So how does your wheel of time look like? Three, three options. One, perfect circle. Second, almost a circle. Number three is shapeless, okay? Perfect circle, almost a circle, shapeless. So I'm seeing some interesting answers coming in the polls. Okay, so around 70% of you have voted. So the question that I'm asking you is, once you're done, joined all the dots, you get a shape, what is that shape looking like? Is it circle? almost a circle or shapeless. You don't even know what to call that, right? So let me close the polling in 10 seconds. Uh, for those of you uh, still voting, just please click one of the options. What does your wheel of time look like?
Time is running out. We're closing in three, two, and one. Right. So the answer, overwhelming answer, if you look at your screens, a 69% is saying it's shapeless. Mine kind of rectangle, hexagon. I don't know what to call this, like new shapes. Uh, almost a circle. Some spaces is fine, but somewhere it's, it's going here and there. And very few of you are saying it's a perfect circle. So it's okay. It's, it's fine. All of us have that moment. So what it's showing us is um, there is an ideal, there's something that we want to achieve, there's something we want to give time, but there are some problems happening in the way, like this, we're not able to give the time we want to give. And, and so two questions that I want to ask you is, which areas of your life are getting ignored? Which areas of your life are getting ignored? And which areas of your life are getting more time than they deserve? So if you look at your graph, please look at the graph, you will find that uh, some areas are shrunken in, and usually those areas are very important areas like reading, spending time with family, you know, things like that, relationships, uh, spiritual uh, life and things like that. You know, it, it gets lesser time than it should. And then you see entertainment and gaming and, and all the fun activities getting more time than they should. And then you wonder, why is my life <laughs> not in the balance? So this is a great activity. I just did this uh, with the 59 year old uh, people at, an hour back. And it was almost 100%. Everyone was saying, my circle is shapeless. So the idea is not to get a perfect circle. We may never get a perfect circle, but it's helping us to see where is my time going? Where am I wasting my time? Where is it getting? So can you just put in the chat, which, is, which for you is getting more time than it deserves? Just put in the, in the chat, what is getting more time than it deserves entertainment tv phone youtube uh netflix entertainment okay more time web surfing instagram uh okay okay tv gaming more time than it deserves phone okay okay a lot of answers coming in yes it's something uh, to do with uh social media for most of you and um, and now next question which area should you spend more time in what do you think i'm not saying this is your wheel of time speaking what are getting involved, uh, ignored, help, okay, your own family, fine, exercise, studies, family time, spiritual life, right, reading, exercise, spending time with my sister, brother, okay, studies, own time, peace of mind, exercise, quiz, online, all right, less of online, wow, 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 wow. So, I mean, it's, it's different for all of us, but the idea is this. Let's get a little more balance. When we are willing to reflect, when you're willing to look into our lives and, and, and ask some tough questions, that is when change happens, right? A change happens, right? So um, these kind of skills are called soft skills. These are things that, uh, that we teach and, and we ourselves are, are, are working uh, you know, to find uh, time uh, to understand this. Um, uh, and, and we do a lot of um, programs for that. And uh, we have one of our participants who had, uh, um, who had attended one of our programs earlier, and then she's here with us. Ayushi, if you can just uh, unmute and... Uh, um, Yes, yes. So, uh, could you please unmute Aishi? Yes. Audible, sir? Can, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, she is a student from um, IT College Lucknow. Please, could you introduce yourself, Aishi? Hello, everyone. My name is Ayushi Pant. I am a student of BA Psychology in Isabella Tobin College, Lucknow. And I did, attended with your workshops and also did an internship with them. Yes, Ash, thanks for introductions. Um, I mean, I just want to ask you, like just, just from a student's perspective, how much is these kind of workshops and skills important, you know, in a student's life? So it's very important to be a good communicator. And I would say an empathetic communicator uh, because let's, uh, I'll just take an example first that uh, let's just say if you're in a group interview or a presentation, let's say, because we're talking about students here. So let's say if there's one student who has a very vast knowledge of the subject being talked about and, but is, the, lacks the skills of uh, good public speaking or communication. And if there's another student who has a very limited amount of information about the subject, but is a very good communicator. So who do you think is likely to make it through the 
um, presentation, it's obviously the one who has the soft skills. So it's very important. And especially when you're in a team group or with your uh, classmates or your teammates, it's very important to be an empathetic listener and communicator because em empathetic listeners, keep, as much as they um, want to be understood, they also make sure they understand the other person. So let's just say that if you're in a group and somebody tells, let's, uh, I'll just take my example. So there, um, in the past, uh, there have been times when I was so desperate to get my point across to the other party that I might have failed to be a good listener. I might have failed to understand the uh, benefit of mutual communication. So that is very important yeah. to yeah. keep the other person's perspective yeah. in mind. And, uh, and, and, and are, these, are these skills something that you pick up um, naturally or, I mean, or do you think that it's helpful to have some sort of training? So skills can always be polished. You can always grow in your skills. It's never too late. But yes, to some people, it does come naturally. And to some, it doesn't. But yes, to those uh, who it doesn't come naturally, they can always grow in these skills, polish these skills, and practice to be a good listener and a good communicator. Right. Because communication, not just in academics, but also in a workplace, it is so important. And now it's so much more important than even the technical knowledge that we have because the technical knowledge might get you through the through the initial phases but to grow and develop in a field it's so important to have these skills of communication yeah, yeah. and Aishi did uh, the internship with us um, in October could you just uh, talk about how was that uh, that experience for you yes sir so so first of all I would like to say that uh uh, it's great that how the internship was mainly focused on polishing the skills of the interns rather than just working completely for the company per se. So that um, and which is great. And um, we were uh, made to watch videos on time management, writing, basically things that are important to us as students right now, and also which will always remain important to us, even when we are not students and working. So, and one thing that has really impacted me uh, in terms of time management is that I have started implementing proper planning and focusing on the urgent and non-important things in life. Like my, for, like for now, it can be my further studies or my career which is important to me, very important to me, but not as urgent. So when those things actually come up, I am prepared for it completely. And another thing I've started practicing is keeping my work in my workplace. So I've set my table in a room and that's the only place I work at. And outside of that place, I make sure that I do anything but not work. So it's it, it really helps me focus better yeah. that okay, when I work in my workplace, my mind completely knows the fact that, okay, this is where you work and you do nothing else but work here. So that has helped me focus better. And we were also uh, made to read the book by Stephen Covey called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which is an outstanding, very informative, very excellent book. I think every one of us should read that. It has seven habits which make us efficient and effective as people. And I have been trying to implement all those activities as much as I can because it talks about being proactive and it talks about setting your goal in your mind before you start working on it. And it's not just relevant to long-term goals, but also short-term goals. And all these activities we were also uh, made to implement in the internships. We were made to write notes on it. And it was mainly just for our benefit, which is great. And I really admire Vigyo for that because it has been a very great ex learning experience for us as interns. Yeah. Thanks. And, Thanks, Aishi. I mean, that was yes. that was uh, good to hear your thoughts. Uh, Aishi was participant of uh, our Thrive workshop. She was uh, one of the outstanding performers. And she, along with Samia, were taken as uh, in as interns. 
and um, and we were blessed to have them um, and get their inputs from a fresh perspective. So we'll talk about Thrive at the very end. And the, the reason we brought out um, Ayushi here uh, to, to hear her thoughts is, you know, as a young uh, student, you know, uh, it's not just what you learn in school and college. What gets you ahead is these skills that you need to pick up. And that's what we as a company hope uh, to impart. Okay, so let's get to the final bit. Uh, it's five time hacks. We're going to talk about uh, five tips, tools, um, um, techniques that will help you uh, master your time. So we're talking about purpose. We're talking about uh, uh, you know being in role centric goal making, and also the important thing is to make your time wheel work a little better, right? So let's get into the five time hacks. Number one, it has to be to do list. It has to be to-do list. So uh, maybe some of you are used to writing to-do list a daily, monthly, weekly. I don't know if you do that, but it's something that's so, so significant. It's important to write down the things that you want to do for each day. And that's a great way to start a day. But just take five minutes in the morning when you get up, just get freshed up and sit on your table. Uh, just write down the things that need to be done for that day or the previous night. Maybe sticky notes, put it somewhere on your table, somewhere where you can see, write it down and then tick when completed. Um, you can think of Google Keep. Uh, it's a good app that I use and has checkboxes and timers and it's a very simple app. You can use it on your laptop or your phones and it's a great way to keep on track of what needs to be completed. But the key is write down the things uh, in order of what you want to do, what you want to do through the day. That's number one, to-do list. Um, um, and, and, and that's something that you just type to do in the chat. If you, um, uh, if you, um, if you, if you, if you understood that, right. So the idea is not to finish everything. One question that is coming in, um, to, to do, you know, I just can't finish all the to-do lists and you know, I feel so disappointed. That's okay. That's fine. But it's better than keeping everything in your mind and forgetting it than putting it down there and seeing and making progress, right? So to do is number one, Google keep is a great app to do that. Number two is to prioritize that list. One of the things that um, uh, Ayushi mentioned is the important and urgent. One thing to ask yourself when you write something on the to-do list is to these two questions. Is it important? Number two, is it urgent? Is it important or is it urgent? So if so, there are some things that is important and urgent, tomorrow you have a test paper, it is important and urgent. Next week you have an assignment, it's important but not urgent. There is a new web series releasing this Friday. Not important, but it seems urgent, right? Uh, there is a, a WhatsApp call that's coming in, seems important, but not very important. It seems urgent. There are some things that are totally not urgent and not important at all. And, and so it's important to ask this question, is it I important? Is it you uh, urgent? And one way to look at it is this person's matrix. It's called the Eisenhower matrix. It's named after Dwight Eisenhower. He was the US president. He was the NATO commander. He was the allied forces uh, commander in chief of the US general. I mean, he's a very illustrated man. And he came up with this idea called the Eisenhower decision matrix. And, um, and, and what he used is these two questions. Simple. Is it important? Is it urgent? Then do it now. Is it important? It's not urgent. Decide for a later time. Put a time for that. It's not important, but it seems urgent. Oh, can anyone do it for me? Delegate that. It's not important and not urgent. Hey, just eliminate that. Delete that. Let it not take your attention. So start with the difficult things. Make the to-do list. Ask yourself two questions. Is it important? Is it urgent? And start with the most difficult things. And so Stephen Covey's book is what the second prize winner will get for the quiz. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a modification of Eisenhower metrics. You can read about Stephen Covey's uh, Covey window and, um, and, and things like that. So to-do list, a great way to keep yourself focused. You know what you need to do, and then you can start some things that are important, urgent, and what are difficult. Start with that. Number three is called smart goals. I'm sure many of you have heard about that. It's basically asking yourself these five questions. Uh, the five questions. Is it specific? Is my goal specific or vague? I want to be a better person. That's a very vague goal. You're not going to get forward with that. It has to be specific. It could be like, I want to start talking to five people this week. That's, that's a great goal. Rather than saying, I want to be a more friendly person. How do you define that? It has to be number one, S for specific. 
Number two, is it measurable? There needs to be some sort of a measuring um, you know, uh, uh, capacity to that. For example, I want to lose weight. Great idea, but is it measurable? How much do you want to lose? I want to uh, jog and I want to start running. How many minutes in the morning or how often do you want to run? How many kilometers do you want to run? Ask yourself, is it measurable? Put a number to that. Number three, is it attainable? I want to be an Olympic champion in kickboxing. Great idea, but is it attainable? I mean, have you started early enough? Is it a attainable goal or is it just too far off? It's not even reachable. That's a good question to ask. Number four, R for relevant. Is it relevant for me right now? That's a good, good idea. Are you, you are inspired by a web series. You want to start acting. Is it relevant for you right now? It's a good question to ask. And number five, is there a time bound deadline? Listen from me. If there is no deadline, it's highly likely that your goals will not be met. We need to have deadlines. And that's something that we do here at Wigio. For everything, there is a deadline. We put a date to it. By when should we get back? And so specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound smart goals is something that you and I should think. Number four is called mini habits. It's a wonderful idea. Let me just give you two pictures for that. Number one is a typical habit that we normally have. We have a great goal. I want to start jogging. I want to start playing the guitar. I want to start reading. I want to start running. Great ideas. That's a big goal. But within one or two days, it just falls apart. And then you try to get back. Then there's an off day. Then you get back off day. And then finally, that habit dies. But instead of that, if there is a mini habit, where you minimize that habit to a very small amount. For example, if you want to start reading, read one page a day. That's a mini habit, but it's so small that it will definitely happen. If you want to read 20 pages a day, that's your, ha that's your habit that you want to start. Very likely that, I know you will lose focus, but keep it to one page a day, two pages a day, something so small that you will only add up to that and that habit builds on. So start something very, very small, really small, something really small, one push up a day. That's it. You know, that, that's it. I just want to jog around my house. It's so silly and simple that you will do it anyway, but then you'll only do more than what you decided. Keep doing it and use habit tracker apps. You can go to Play Store and just type habit tracker. There are plenty of them there. It will help you see how many of those habits are you able to do uh, continuously. So habit tracker, start small, keep doing it. Number five, the fifth one is called Pomodoro Timer. A very simple but very powerful technique. It's used to uh, by students across the world, you know, and professionals across the world to manage their time. So what they do is, if they have an assignment, let's say you want to start write an assignment, it takes two hours. What you do is you divide that work into blocks of thirty minutes. Two hours divided into four, thirty minutes, four blocks, and then for each block, divide it into twenty-five minutes plus five, twenty-five plus five, twenty-five minutes of intense focus and five minutes of relaxing. That's because our human body uh, and human mind, you know, it's, it's, it's easy for us to focus for 25 minutes, but if you want to stretch for two hours, it's very, very difficult. If you want to study for an exam, sit all night, don't do it for two hours stretch, you will sleep off. Take it into segments of 30 minutes each. 25 minutes of focus, no phones, no distractions. Keep a timer, have a look at, at the clock or something like that. Always keep the clock in your mind, use a timer, but after 25 minutes, take a five minute break. Don't reverse that. Five minutes of focus and 25 minutes of relaxation, that won't work. But Pomodoro is a good way uh, to look at um, of, of time. So there are a lot of students, um, uh, it's also called sandwich time. Yes, a lot of way, ways to look at that. Pomodoro is an Italian word and, um, and, and it's a great way to look at time. So these are some, some th uh, things that you can start with the to-do list, with prioritizing, with important and urgent, thinking of, um, of how, to, uh, uh, how to keep it in smart goals and keep thinking of, uh, of, of mini habits and, and Pomodoro small ways in which you can uh, you can do that, right? So where do we go from here as we close our time? Where do we go? So what's next? Number one, you start um, reflecting on your purpose, on your roles and your goals. Don't get so consumed in your uh, entertainment. Don't get so consumed on Instagram and Netflix and Amazon Prime and Mirzapur and you know and Sherlock Holmes and 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 and, and Mentalist and whatever shows that that's that's out there right now and Stranger Things. Don't get so consumed with that that you forget 
there's a higher goal there's a higher purpose you are on this earth with a greater purpose you have roles to play and you have goals to achieve not to just focus on one role of studies and be the best student and forget everything else but to holistically use your time well so reflect on that take time to reflect on on these goals and uh, so let me just ask you which of these following things do you want to start today uh, of the hacks as you reflect on your own time is it today is to do uh, make to do list is it uh, to ask yourself is it important and urgent and prioritize is it to set smart goals of specific measurable attainable relevant and time bound or is it to start using a pomodoro timer of 30 minutes of 25 plus 5 whatever you decide to do make sure that you keep working on that make it into a mini habit to do list make it into a mini habit everything that you start make it into something that is repeated it will definitely take you forward number 2 is uh, get equipped and skilled and, and that's what aishi was saying and many of these skills some of us are in born with that but many of us need polishing and one of the things that we are doing um, at vigio is something called thrive vigio itself means thrive and so we have we run this workshop called a thrive workshops uh, we did it in a college last year we got good response so we thought of using it uh, and online take it online this year we have three modules uh, personal skills interpersonal skills and career skills so personal skills we talk about looking at ourselves like it's this is a small version of the personal skills but we have expanded four sessions on that um and emmanuel will put the link for thrive right now in the chat as well so it's it's a small version of of what we're seeing is small version of i personal skills interpersonal skills is something that we look at how to communicate how to present how to make presentations how to critically think you know think like that and then uh, you can think of those things and career skills for those who are in the final year of college you can think of um sharpening your presentation sharpening your communication skills email writing linkedin um um group discussions interview skills things like that so it's a small way in which we um uh, we help out students you can check out vigio.in/thrive um and uh, of course it's a it's a uh, the charge a fee for that a very nominal negligible fee but we want to keep it as small as possible so that as many students can take benefit out of it so class 8 onwards you are free to join um, you're welcome to join and so keep thinking of that and finally enjoy the journey so keep skilling up yourself there's a lot of free material out there lot of personalized coaching out there lot of lot of people are willing to help you and enjoy this journey of uh, of fine tuning and sharpening your skills right so that being said let's uh, go to one last round of uh, of of today's quiz the round 3 of our quiz and we're going to look back reflect on the last uh, 30 or 45 minutes of teaching and i want to see if you uh, paid attention to what i was uh, teaching okay so round 3 this is question number 7 and uh, three more questions coming your way please uh, come on to menti those who are not here on menti uh, please come on to menti click on the link uh, if if you uh, want to come on menti and uh, is waiting for 10 more seconds for everyone to join those on youtube can join as well all right so seventh question is coming up in 5 4 3 2 1 and one. question number 7 uh, round number 3 the last three questions on your menti screen dwight eisenhower was uh, which among the following an american president commander of allied forces us army general or all of the above um dwight eisenhower the founder of the eisenhower matrix for decision making was which of the following time is up he was an american president the 34th president he was the commander of the allied forces he was a general in the army so he is all of the above the right answer is all of the above i'd mentioned that in my presentation right let's look at the leaderboard after question number 7 Okay, Timothy Abraham is doing comfortably well on the top. Others are pushing up. The top five winners get prizes from us. Daniel is on second. Sarah Susan Koshi, Janvi Patel, Aryaman Roy in number three, four, and five. Right. So let's go to next question. Second last question. This is the decider. Okay, second last question uh, coming up onto your screen. What does R stand for in smart goals? What does R in smart goals stand for? Reliable, reachable, relevant, related. 
what does r in smart goal stand for r in smart goal stand for reliable reachable relevant related all right so time is up time is up and uh, we see that yes 105 of you got it right it is relevant it it means it is relevant yes r is for specific measurable attainable relevant and time bound one more question coming up let's see who is in the leaderboard um okay the usual suspects on the top uh let's see how this all adds up does there uh does it change no no not change not a change in top 5 last question the final question this is coming up on your menti screen 157 of you ready to go this is the last question coming up on the menti screen pomodoro in italian means i didn't say what it means take a guess take a guess does it mean time does it mean motivation does it mean prime focus or does it mean tomato <laughs> for all of those options so pomodoro in italian means which of the following just take a guess if you don't know the answer right the right answer is 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 22 if you got it right it means tomato that's all it means uh, the person who invented this method had a timer in the shape of a tomato in his kitchen and that's why he named it as the pomodoro which means tomato technique and that's what it means so you can read about pomodoro later right so um, that was a guess work for many of you but uh, let's see does it change oh timothy got it right sarah got it right some others did not um, unfortunately but let's see how does it change the leaderboard yes it's timothy abraham sarah susan koshi and daniel koshi right so these are guys joining us so let me uh, just unmute timothy abraham timothy can you unmute yourself please Where are you joining us from? I'm from Jaipur. Jaipur. How old are you, Dimiti? I'm 13 years old. 13. Wow. Class eight, I guess. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, I mean, it was yeah. a wonderful quizzing from you. Uh, great to see you win. Uh, congratulations, everyone else. Everyone else who tried, right? I mean, it's it's been a it's been a fantastic uh, quizzing experience for all of us. So uh, please put in Menti. The Menti. Uh, how did you find this session? You can put it on Menti, and uh, we will be sharing the uh, uh, the link for the feedback and certification in the chat right now. Um, so you can see a link that Emmanuel has shared. This is a feedback form plus a certificate form. If you want a certificate for this session, please fill in your full name, whatever you want to see on the feed on the on the certificate, and uh, let us know how you felt about the session uh, on the Menti board as well. So thank you so much uh, for joining. We are Vigio. We exist to help students and teachers. We exist to. excel uh, help to see you excel so you can contact us at contact with vigio uh, more importantly like us on facebook it's very simple vigio india you can just search vigio india you'll find our page uh, on instagram and on facebook vigio india is our uh, our, our uh, handles and page so uh, help us uh, spread the word out we have a quiz night coming on december 16th vigio.in/quiz we've got thrive workshop starting on december 3 so whichever you are interested in um let us know let us know your thoughts thank you so much for joining uh, i hope that this was helpful to see the big picture of productivity at the same time looking at some hacks some quick tips uh for maximizing your time so see you soon see you some of you in thrive uh for everyone else um it's it's goodbye thank you so much for joining